Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Tisha here, back for another Sister Wives review. I'm talking kind of funny right now because the intro alone, I have recorded three different times because apparently I don't understand the difference between hitting thumbs up and hitting the like button, which is the same thing. <laughs> So do me a favor and go ahead and do that now so I don't jack it up like how I've been jacking it up. Season 12, let's start this episode three review. Not only is Maddie in town for her 21st birthday, but she is in town to tell a secret that they have been keeping since September. We begin this episode with the bald eagle talking about his newest favorite child, which it went from Solomon to now it's Ariella. Ari is 10 months old and getting all the attention that both the bald eagle and the bird love for their chicks to get. It's been a while since Maddie told her parents the big news and now she's ready to reveal the secret to the entire family, which consists of the mom's with the exception of Mary, because Mary at this point, unlike some of the other moms, has an actual job. She's selling um, leggings. I wonder if this is what helped her get her uh, bed and breakfast, but that's what she's doing. And she's out of town, I guess, on a convention or something doing that. So most of the kids have gathered at Janelle's house to celebrate the birthday. The family is all in the living room. Cody decides to give Maddie her birthday gift. I completely feel like in this moment, this wasn't just, oh, let me give you your gift. It was, let me show off, give you this gift so that I can receive a lot of adoration, not just from you for the, for the gift, but from the kids as well. We find out that he purchased matching watches that each have the entire New Testament of the Bible written in microscopic print on the back. I think that's cool if that's really a thing. Um, it's for Maddie and Caleb. The family thinks that it's cool and they love the gifts. Cody then uses the opportunity to explain to us how he doesn't care if his children follow a different religion than he does. Even though Madison believes in the Book of Mormon, she has embraced Caleb's faith, which is evangelical Christian faith. He tells us that the choice of who you marry to him is more important than the religion in which you choose to live. I've never heard a religious man, at least not the type of religious man that Cody presented himself to be at first, that would say that whom someone marries is more important than their religious beliefs. I kind of feel like I would think that if he is the way that he is, he would think that that all matters. But for the purposes of what he's saying, we're just going to go with it. Me personally, for me, we have to be like-minded. We can't be opposite in our belief system because that may cause problems for certain things. I'm not saying that it doesn't work because I do know couples um, that have been married for several years that do not have the same um, background, but I just feel like it may require certain, you know, a little bit more work in certain areas. Bottom line is for them, they want their children to have a relationship with God, regardless of whatever religion they choose. And with that statement, then I would assume that you would want for them to be a part of some form of Christianity. It's time for the big reveal. Caleb tells everyone it's time for him to give Maddie her present. Everyone watches to see what she's gotten, but you know, the, the bird or the bald eagle, one of them are going to interject and the bird wants to know, like, hold up before you do it. Um, she doesn't know about it. Does she, um, um, does she know what it is? And he says, no, which is ironic based on what it is. Clearly she knows what the gift is. Maddie then surprises everyone by unzipping her hoodie and revealing the yellow sign on her stomach that says baby on board. The wives are surprised. Well, they're excited and they're surprised and they're elated and they're looking at Janelle and Cody and he is really quick to let them know that he already knew. So they're surprised that Cody didn't spill the, the secret and he didn't spill the beans and I am too because he ruins everything and I believe that he has a lot of discussions despite what they continue to try to tell us 
even in this episode, he shares a lot of what is discussed with one wife with another. The entire family is excited and you see Maddie call Mary on video to let her know about the pregnancy. Mary is also excited. Everyone is screaming and hugging and crying. And that's everyone with the exception of McKelty and Tony. They're both sitting there with no visible, no visible excitement. I don't know if that was editing or if that was truly what was going on. But me personally, I've seen um, more excitement with them talking about cake than they were in finding out that her sister was having a child. In my opinion, I think they're disappointed that it wasn't them or maybe that it was taken away from their wedding. I don't know. It just seems like, okay, they didn't seem as excited. Maddie and Caleb then tell the family that they're moving back home after McKelty's wedding because they want to be closer to the family. I didn't understand how if they were out there for school, then why they would move home, especially since at this point, Maddie went from going to school in Utah to leaving there and supposedly going to school wherever they were now. And now what she's uprooting again and transferring to another school. It just seems like a lot of movement to me. And that can't look good when you have to have all this different stuff on your transcripts. I don't think it's just about being closer to family. I think that it's about being closer to childcare and also to have financial support because kids aren't cheap. Maddie says they are really excited to be moving from their house in Montana back to Vegas. To me, moving from a house to a bedroom at Janelle's does not sound exciting or make sense. I don't understand why they wouldn't move to Mary's home where she has a bunch of extra rooms. It just seems like, why is Mary never an option? Especially since Leon isn't even really interacting with Mary. That would have been perfect for them to stay there at her house because doesn't she have four bedrooms? Cody is thinking about moving, yet they're going to be moving there. Apparently, Cody has been thinking about moving the family back to Utah. Cody and Robin really wanted to eventually move back to Utah where Christine is adamantly against it. I wonder how Christine went from being so against this back then to what we know now is her being for it because she lives there. I wonder if it was solely the whole polygamy thing or if she just had no desire to live there. And I also wanna know what led Robin from wanting to be there to not wanting to be there at all. It's like, did you purposely choose the polar opposite of what Christine desired? Because it just doesn't make sense why your opinion of moving to Utah changed, especially once polygamy was no longer considered a felony. Why didn't Robin's opinion change? Robin says that she wants to be back at Utah because she wants them to be back connected to their church as well as their faith. Cody let us know that when they moved to the state of Nevada that they sued Utah. They won in federal court, but the lawsuit is currently in the Court of Appeals. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they weren't the only ones on this suit. But the way that Cody's saying it, it's making it sound like they were. Let me know down in the comment section. Um, so he says they can't move back yet because it's still in the Court of Appeals. Janelle agrees with the bird and Cody. Janelle wants to move back as well at some point, whereas Christine is still refusing to move back or hear about moving back because at one point she's like, Robin, just let me live in this moment. We're not moving back because Maddie's coming here. We're going to stay grounded. This uh, goes back to me several other episodes saying that Christine out of all of them really did have a fear of the government. And I believe that sometimes Cody played on that fear. Christine's whole thing was too many people have a problem with plural marriage. She's done. She doesn't want to move back there. I think some of that back then went to her safety. You can't one minute tell her she's in danger of this and she's in danger of that and you're in danger of being arrested, Cody, and being removed from the home and all this other stuff because y'all went public. And then the next, it's okay. I think we can move back. Make up your mind. It was legitimate for Christine. Um, He says that doesn't really matter what it is that they want to do. 
because um, ultimately the, the, the what they do is going to come down to him the same way that he ultimately decided that they were going to make this move to Vegas is also the same way that we saw him decide that they were going to move to Flagstaff. So as much as she's sitting here and she's stating her opinion, no matter what she decides, Cody's going to do what he wants because he alludes to it. He says it. He even says like there are certain things that sometimes you just don't tell wives. What? Uh, later on, we see Christine and Janelle practice the dance moves on their own for McKelty's bridal shower. It's way out of Janelle's box, but she lets us know multiple times that she's doing this for McKelty. Christine pulls the bio mom card saying that she's going to be in front for the dance and they're going to be in back. So she's Gladys and they're the pips. She's the bio mom and that's what she wants doesn't seem like that even needed to be said. If you wanted to be the lead, be the lead. Christine says, McKelty will see Janelle is doing this. At first, she's going to be like, what is she doing this for? Then she's going to be like, oh my goodness, Janelle's doing this when she's never done this for anybody else. Then it's going to make her feel very important because much like Christine, Janelle feels a little bad about her reaction um, when finding out that she wanted to get married. I don't feel like any of them were wrong in their reaction. I think that that was the most honest that we've probably seen them be. It doesn't sound unrealistic to me that a group of adults who have raised this child find out uh, recently that in, in five months time, okay, we didn't even know that you were serious to now you want to get married. That's a big jump. Garrison, it's been four months since he's been gone, they're going to have a barbecue at Janelle's to celebrate him being back. You hear Janelle saying, thank goodness he's just National Guard because I couldn't imagine what it would feel like to have a kid that deploys. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Woo! I just thought about it. Like, my goodness. Here she is fearing the deployment of her son. And we know now that, you know, he's he's no longer here. So to think of her fear in that, it just, I, I was going through so many emotions watching this part because it's like, dang, she was in fear of him leaving just to go away for a few months. And now, you know, he's gone. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Christine says, even when the children aren't biologically yours, you miss them. For Christine, it's always been evident that she means a lot to Janelle's kids and they mean a lot to her. The bird, however, I don't feel like the bird can relate. Cody lets us know that Garrison has been eating military chow for four months. So this should be pretty simple and he should be pretty excited with um, hot dogs. And in my opinion, unseasoned burgers. I don't understand. And y'all, for those of y'all who don't, who, who, who do this, I'm kind of judging you. Just got to be honest. I don't understand having meat and not putting any type of seasoning on them. Like he didn't even put salt and pepper on the thing. And I know he didn't season it because he zoomed in on the burgers. And then at one point, we saw him with the whole stack of frozen burgers with the parchment paper in the middle, separating them to put it straight on the, the grill. He says that they normally make two dozen uh, of each burger and hot dog. The next thing I know, as I said, they're frozen without seasoning. Then, of course, if you've ever seen Cody grill, then you know what happens next. Put it in the fire. It, put it in the fire. Put it. <laughs> I was going to say, put the emoji of what you think happens next in the chat, but I just said what it is. <laughs> if you've never seen Cody on the grill before, what Cody always manages to do is he burns the meat. Now, he always makes an excuse. One time, it was legitimate because Isabel did really cut her foot and she was bleeding really, really badly. But I've, every time he's on that grill, he burns something. Uh, they say um, it normally takes two dozen of each. 
and, and looking at the grill is because Cody's burning it. Logan then arrives at the house with Garrison. First person he hugs is Peyton. You hear Cody saying, "You don't. Why aren't you in your your military? He, he he. Why would he be in his military stuff? He just wants to come home and enjoy. But it's all a part of the look. I think Cody loves being able to brag on his kids because he feels like they're an extension of him. He runs towards his family." As he's running, you can see how much he loves them. Janelle embraces him and she cries. And in confessional, you hear her say that her children have always been her Achilles heel. And it's true. Janelle can be as stoic as she wants to be, but it's obvious that she loves her kids. Garrison tells us that he plans to go to college while being in the National Guard. And then he's going to try and join the army as an officer. He also lets us know that he's not interested in plural marriage. Cody says what Garrison has done is necessary for manhood. Too bad Cody had, didn't do this either. That way he could become a man. You see him embracing everyone with excitement, including Robin's kids. Can someone let me know when Robin's kids were treated poorly? Because she told us in this most recent season that her kids have always been treated so badly and it happened for so many years. And I must not be seeing it or maybe I'm missing some episodes because we keep seeing instances over and over and over again where her kids are being treated just like the other kids even to the point where cody is like there is no step this there is no half this so if there is no step and there is no half then how are your kids being treated so poorly i don't see it this is all a figment of her imagination christine says he looks different he came back home like a man. You even see him excited to see Ariella. The bird is holding her and she seems hesitant to, to give him to her because she's afraid that um, she'll cry. And he's like, I just want to hold her, you know, for a second. And it just goes to show you that he had so much love and he just wanted to be a part of his family. Robin says she's excited to see... Um, him and that you know he likes to see all of his siblings no matter what mom they came from it just speaks to the family it's so sad that this family went from what it looked like was loving to what it currently is and I feel like underneath the surface in the beginning that there was love there but I feel like the bird and the bald eagle managed to slowly dismantle the family. Like there were some issues. There were some things. I do feel like at some point Christine would have left Cody because little by little she started seeing her worth. But I feel like they all, all of them, suffered until, you know, they got free of them. The bird talks about how a lot of people... um see stress and they see pettiness and and jealousy I try to do my face and the struggles and that's just not who we are everybody's not struggling um with their needs and the baloney like that speak for yourself how can you say everybody's not struggling and we just heard for multiple seasons about christine's struggle and multiple seasons about um mary's struggle even as recently because she had a whole catfish. So obviously it's not baloney. There's some struggle there. Then we go to Mary, who we don't see at this event. And what we find out is, even though Mary knew that Garrison was coming, that she missed when he initially arrived because she was home working. So I'm like, okay, she was home working. No one thought to call her, but you're supposed to be telling us that y'all are so united as a family. And when Janelle made that announcement that he's 25 minutes away, no one who was free, who wasn't busy uh, getting flustered about their son's arrival, no one couldn't text and say, uh, Mary, he's 25 minutes away. Come on. They have a good time. End of that. It's time to practice again. The wives gather at Christine's house to practice their dance moves before their big performance that Christine is directing. They dig through a pile of wigs, costumes, and accessories. They're supposed to be changing into these costumes. Um, and as they're getting ready to try things on before they dance, we hear that they've never gotten dressed in front of each other. How do you all call yourself sister wives and you've never even gotten in dressed in front of each other i have friends that have seen me get dressed it just i don't know 
maybe it's to their culture, so I'll leave it alone. But even when I was in dance school and I had a recital and numbers were close to each other, I got I changed my clothes right behind stage, behind a little makeshift curtain and had multiple people helping me put on stuff. And y'all are I never mind. I just don't get it. I mean, multiple. I'm I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about it. To the point where I remember before gravity hit, right? And and how that quick change was. And then once gravity hit and I had to do the tape and stuff and the like how <laughs> sorry it's just like y'all are acting like it's a big deal like even have you seen each other in your underwear I, I don't know okay they practice the most basic steps and they struggle Christine and Robin are doing two different moves Mary just wants it to be uniform I don't understand why if you wanted it to be uniform or why you needed more practice you didn't record it on your phone and do it but they do it. They're going to make fun with it. And Janelle lets us know it's time to go. She's just, you know, tapped out at this point because she wants to just get it over with. I like Janelle, but she was, she would get on my nerves because she kept complaining at various points about doing the dance. And if it was causing you so much anxiety and if it was bothering you so much, I'd much rather you have a smaller part in the dance so that you're not so stressed out about it. Bridal shower time. It's time for McKelty and Tony's bridal shower. In case you didn't know, Tony is Mexican. So they've decided to make Mexican hot chocolate for the bridal shower. I do love that they are making sure that they incorporate his incorporate his culture um, into this because it also helps make his family feel welcome. As Christine is making the chocolate, she lets us know that it smells awful. She's supposed to have dark chocolate for the recipe, but she has something like semi-sweet dark chocolate or whatever. Aspen is stressed because that's not the type of chocolate it's supposed to be. The intelligent thing to me would have been to have Tony's mom come help and assist or his grandmother, but they didn't think of that. Not that it much mattered because in the end it turned out okay. Aspen is the maid of honor, so for the most part she planned the bridal shower and she's very stressed out. We find out how her and McKelty used to struggle, but they got really close, especially around the time that she was a senior and then when they lived together. And now they're at the point where they miss one another. Christine points out how when Aspen gets stressed, that McKelty is normally the one that calms her down. You see again how stressed Aspen is. And I'm thinking to myself, Christine probably didn't make it any better by running around the room screaming. So we see Christine run as mariachi music plays in the background while she takes off. Tony then arrives with his mom, sister, and some of the friends. We're reminded by Christine that they do not get to spend a lot of time with his family because his family lives in Utah. And that uh, they're, they probably seen them three times at this point. Then she thinks about the lip sync and she's like, oh man, we should have um, invited Maria, which is Tony's mom into the lip sync, especially because she dances better than us. His mom, however, isn't worried about any of that because she's just impressed with the overall party. She loves the fact that they made the chocolate and she loves that they have some of the pastries that come from their culture. Tony says overall that it came out good, that the, the chocolate was really, really good. And because he's like Cody, Aspen lets us know that it's very hard to impress him. So they feel accomplished. The bridal shower guests arrive and they play games. The bridesmaids each give McKelty their favorite love story. One of them ends up giving her the Fifty Shades of Grey. I would love to see some of the mom's reactions when they read it, especially... Christine's because she turns red so easily and maybe the birds because the bird she the bird I don't know the bird comes across as a prude but I don't think she's as prudy as she tries to make herself see Christine uh it says she's familiar with that book and everyone should read it it's a notable read but she didn't like it she didn't read the whole book she was joking around 
She said she read parts of it. It didn't really hold her interest. And as she's saying this, she's blushing and turning red. Janelle says it's basically a book about sex and bondage and this rich man that gets to get away with anything and the woman will do it because he has money. I think it's more than that. The bird says it was a joke book. Thank you for letting us know. We really didn't know that it was a joke when it was handed over to her and the person who handed it to her started laughing and so did the others. But I mean, if she reads it for leisure time, then she reads it for leisure time. We see the ladies gather to do their performance. They call, well, more, more so um, Christine, calls her look hideously perfect, but I actually thought it was cute for a 70s look. Robin says she's ready to get started because she wants to throw up. Robin's look made me laugh. That blonde wig that was oversized and on her face made me laugh. Janelle's made me laugh a little bit too, but it's cute. I like like costumey things. Apparently, the moms wanted to do a lot of things that Aspen told them no to. They wanted like a fog machine and a spotlight and all these other things. And she was like, no. We see them perform. People are laughing. McKelty is laughing and she's loving it. She says, overall, it was cool. It was fun. As we're watching them sing, Robin is singing a completely different song. Despite not being familiar with the song and them speaking in Spanish, Tony's family enjoyed it too. And I'm so over hearing that they're Hispanic. I get it. I get it. And I appreciate it. And I here's the thing. I love learning about other people's cultures. I can't think of your name, but I appreciate how in the last video, you broke down some things and explained some stuff to me. And I thought it was so cool knowing, you know, some of the things that happened in the culture, like how after, you know, the marriage ceremony, you go back to the, I think it was the, I can't remember, the in, the in-laws house and you, you know, you eat and drink with them. I, I think that, and if I'm getting it wrong, I'm, I apologize. Go to the last video and look in the comment section and there's a nice description about some of the history and some of the things that happened when it comes to weddings and I can appreciate that I love it I just feel like sometimes there's a little bit of overcompensation here and I don't feel like they need to do it we know Mackenzie open Mackenzie McKelty opens her gifts and Maria has given her lingerie and we find out that all of Tony's family has given her lingerie. The sister wives are shocked that Tony's family brought thongs and lacy uh, negligees from McKelty. And the question is asked if this is a cultural thing, which goes back to me saying that I'm tired of them putting everything to the culture. Yes, I think it was Mary who asked it. All Mexican people purchase undergarments as presents regardless of what the occasion is. And some of them even wear those undergarments called lingerie. I even heard that other nationalities do it as well. <gasps> so shocking, right? Even Americans do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just like, what in the world? <laughs> oh, Janelle says, I think we're just prudes. You're right, Janelle. Ah, Y'all are prudes. I'm not knocking prudish ways, but it's like, come on, y'all. Y'all at this point have, have lived long enough and you saw Maddie's shower and you know what comes of a shower and you know that this is different and these people are different in, in their belief system because Tony tells us that they're Catholic. Even, I don't know. I feel like religion or not, certain religions... <sighs> They don't care about all that. You're going to get some intimate. You're going to get some underwear. You're going to get some panties. You might even get a naughty toy like a whip or something. Live. It's, I think it's like a week later. Janelle is moving things around in her house in preparation for the arrival of Maddie and Caleb, who will be there in six weeks. Despite knowing that they're coming, there seems to not have been a previous discussion about what this would look like. And we know that Cody likes to feel like he's controlling things. So we see him sprint over to Janelle's place, like her house is on fire, to order her and the kids around on how to move the furniture and what he thinks he likes. Huh. He says that he has to make sure that this is, you know, done right. So Cody comes over to figure out where they're going to be staying he finds out that they're going to be in this particular room and that they may possibly have to share a bathroom with the boys. Cody is completely against that. I kind of agree that they should have their own bathroom. 
So even though he is complaining currently about the amount of money that they're spending on McKelty's wedding, Cody recommends that he wants to do a small renovation on Janelle's house in this hallway. He wants to frame the hallway and restretch the carpet. And he claims that it will only probably take a weekend to do. This is coming from the same man who can't even properly mount a TV. Janelle doesn't like the idea and she doesn't think that it makes sense and she doesn't want to block off her hallway. He wants her to take Hunter's room. She doesn't want him to take Hunter's room. Then she says something about her mom being in the other room, which I don't know if her mom was there for just the holiday or something else. She is planning on using what was the game room as like a little apartment for Maddie and Caleb and the baby. Cody really wants to, however, do what he wants to do. It doesn't make sense, though, because this is the same man who told us that he's thinking about moving back to Utah. So why are you trying to do all of this and renovate this house if you're going to leave the house? Janelle reminds us that Cody starting a major construction on her house is not feasible and in her opinion is not happening. Cody suggests that Janelle take away Hunter's room since he's away in the military. He's like, he's only here for like eight weeks. Janelle puts her foot down and says, absolutely not, that Hunter is sensitive about things like that. Unlike the bald eagle and his molting ways, Janelle is in tune with her children and she cares about all of them, not just the ones that have come from the bird. Cody just wants Janelle to work with him. She says she'll try, but hopefully she'll have her way. Um, Last practice of Christine still practicing her song. She is singing at McKelty's wedding per McKelty's request. She feels like she sounds better. This is her 11th and final practice. And I will tell you all, in my opinion, she does not sound good. She actually sounds about the same. All the adults come over to Christine's house to look at this life-size bride and groom pinatas that have arrived per McKelty and Tony's request. It's not as bad as they were making it seem. Christine thinks it's horrifying because it's a bride and groom and they're going to be beating it. I really don't feel like it's that big of a deal. If they like it, they love it. I think the biggest problem I have with their wedding is it doesn't seem cohesive. It just seems like a bunch of random things being thrown out there. But it's not my wedding. So my opinion doesn't matter. Just like theirs doesn't. Cody says that them wanting this giant pint... Um, this these giant pinatas is a part of you know tony's culture i don't know if them being giant is a part of the culture but yes pinatas are a part of the culture tony has real emotional connection ac according to um cody with cakes and pinatas we hear that there's going to also be mexican candy put in the pinatas and christine lets us know that she didn't know that there was a difference between mexican and caucasian candy until tony brought over the mexican candy and i'm like okay y'all really and truly have been completely sheltered if you don't know that there is a difference in candy I've had lots of non-American candy and it is different. I have a cousin that brings over different chocolate candies for me that you can't get here and they are different. I just don't understand. Like I got to keep reminding myself that they were sheltered, but it's like sometimes I hear them talking. I'm like, okay, at this point, y'all have been on our TV screens for years. You haven't figured out yet that there's a lot more than what you know. Christine also has the family join her, more like the the, the um, kids, to help her make Frisbees. They're going to be incorporating Frisbees into the wedding ceremony because McKelty and um, Tony met playing Ultimate Frisbee. I've never been a Frisbee person, but if you like it, have fun with it. As they leave the ceremony, the plan is for the whole audience to throw Frisbees over them. And as she's saying it, I'm just picturing somebody clunking Tony or McKelty. <laughs> walking out you just finished kissing you just got announced as husband and wife and you're taking your photo op in them boom <laughs> christine says she can picture one of the kids pelting them yeah exactly i thought the same thing 
Um, but the Frisbees are really, really small. Like, they're real small. Um, this She wants the kids to write something nice on them. They say different things, but then you got the one kid who writes something like, I want a spoon, and Christine felt like that was a bit much because other people are going to be seeing these. Uh, we find out that Christine got um, Tony a colada ring as a gift, as a well, a warm welcome into the family. To me, once again, this is overcompensation at its finest. I feel like Christine feels like she treated him so badly that she has to keep doing different things. But let it go. Because either way, if Tony is anything like I think he is, and he does seem like how I think he is because he's a lot like Cody, he's going to hold a grudge about it either way. Which may be why he's talking so much crap right now on Patreon. But um, I don't think that they're wrong for their reaction. To me... As I said before, it is abnormal for after five months for you to not take pause. Despite their faith, these kids all say that they're not going to be polygamous. So what's the rush? Why is the courting process so rushed other than to, for purity reasons? Christine, it's, an, it's another day. Christine lets us know that she's in charge of giving McKelty something borrowed. So she has decided to cut the lace off of her wedding dress and make it into flowers from McKelty's bouquet. I think that that is extremely thoughtful. She says that they're doing great right now, her and Cody, and she just wants to pass on the good vibes that they have through the dress with the flowers. She's very emotional as she tries on the dress one last time. We see her appear in it. This has got to be a big deal for her because she's kept this for all these years. So not only are you cutting up the wedding dress, but you're cutting up something that has a lot of memories attached to it and that her mom made for her. Her mom made her the dress. Even though her mom wasn't in attendance, her mom made her that dress. It's very loose at this point. She's swimming in it because she's lost a lot of weight. Cody walks in and says, what are you doing in that really loose dress? She says, how does it look? He pulls her in. Cody's excited because it's like, yeah, look at my girl. I remember how that dress fit on her before because we've seen the picture like 20 times at this point. And yeah, my girl looks good. So he pulls her in, hugs her, and he says, uh, you're thinner. You're, you're a lot thinner than before. Did it fit like that when we were married? You're so tiny now. I wonder how often... Christine received those compliments. It was like a flood of compliments from Cody. He got excited seeing her look smaller. I don't think, and y'all can tell me what you feel down below. I don't think Cody ever was into larger women. I don't. He says it, but I don't think he was. Because he seems to be extremely attracted to them in their smaller states. I could be wrong. You all let me know. And then especially when she says, uh, I think of Robin talking about the weight gain and stretch marks. These are things that come to my mind and think that he's not into a larger woman. We're reminded again about their history. Cody says, Christine flirted a lot with me and I fell for it. That we were friends for like three years before we got married. They were engaged for one month though. They were friends for three years. But in the process of them actually courting and getting engaged, it was only for a month. They hadn't seen each other for a long time um, after the proposal and stuff. And they saw each other right before they got married. He didn't even tell his boss he was getting married. Christine's mom made that dress that they thought was horrible. And she didn't have time to try on the gown. So even back then, it didn't fit correctly. Cody admits that he was not into... A lot of it, the day that he got married, he was a deer in headlights and all those other things. We've heard this story before. If you want to hear more, go listen to the audio read that I have in the playlist because they go into a little bit more detail about it. Um, Christine says, you know, thinking back to it is somewhat depressing, but we've really overcame a lot of things. Cody and her have a little sweet conversation. We see the kids try it on. Then Christine finally uh, brings the, the dress to the table, grabs a pair of scissors, and cuts out pieces of the lace to begin to make flowers for McKelty's bouquet. Christine says there's going to be highs and lows in their marriage, 
and that when she thinks back to some of her lows, Vegas, when they moved into the rentals, was really a major low for her because she lost her best friend. That's because that's around the time that the bald eagle and him were in marital bliss and you weren't. Looking back at it, she wished she told herself that this was just only going to be for a moment and that things are going to be wonderful again too. I feel like Christine really spent a lot of her marriage giving herself various pep giving herself various pep talks to make it through because to sit here and to always like she always takes blame for everything. It's just blame 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 blame. Sorry that this episode was all over the place y'all with my review my notes i stopped i stopped and started a lot of times if i'm being honest if there's something that i left out feel free to put it down below i'm looking forward to the next episode because it seems like mary's about to tee a lot of people off with this whole bread and breakfast thing and i'm interested in seeing what comes of it until next time